Now, what happens if you get a shark? I know there's some very large sharks out there. What happens if you get a, a massive great white that doesn't fit in the stretcher? Well, there's a different strategy. So, with the stretcher, that's for sharks really up to about three metres. Right. Uh, for sharks larger than three metres, it's a completely different method again. So, right. Um, effectively, we have to catch them again. Mm -hmm. So, we still use the baited hook scenario. Yes. Uh, contrary to what people think, you don't actually need large hooks to catch these animals. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same principle. You just try to actually hook them in the jaw, the corner of the mouth. Yep. yep. And then what happens is the floats do the work. So it's actually the gear you use. Not All right. So, so you've got floats on the line as well. So what happens? And what happens is uh, we might have two large floats or mm -hmm. one large float on the line to start with. Yep. Shark will take the bait. Yep. Take off, and they're their inclination is to dive, so they want to get out of there as quick as possible. Yes, yeah. So they're fighting against this weight, and they tend to run with the line, and, and the floats are actually attacked, attached to shark clips that can slide up and down the line. Okay, righto. So what we do is, uh, as the line's running out, we attach more clips and more yep. floats. Yep. So it basically creates more resistance to the shark, so yep. eventually, you know, it's, it's will to dive, yep. is, it ties itself out and it right. comes to the surface. And then we can bring it alongside the boat and mm -hmm. what we try and do is uh, tail rope them. Okay, yeah, right. Yep. And a like the lasso over the back. Yep, so the, the tail's probably the most dangerous piece of equipment on a shark. Right, from your point of view on the side of the boat anyway, yep. yeah. And then what we do is we make a lasso that goes over the, the front of the shark. Mm -hmm. So that then slides over the, the pectoral fins, just, just in behind the petrol, pectoral fins. Mm. And then the shark's secured to the boat. And that's between the gills as well, isn't it? So yeah, the gills are still free. Yep. Exactly. Uh, same thing, oxygen feed over, over the shark's mouth. Mm. And then uh, that lasso arrangement at the front we can uh, rotate it in such a way that even a five metre shark, you can actually turn it over on its back. Yeah, right, I see it is. Mm. And uh, they're, at this stage, they're quite placid, so they're not stressed or anything, they're just... No, fairly, yeah. fairly placid. So they're pretty, mm. much, they're pretty much worn out from... Yeah, from diving and yep. thrashing around. Yep. Oh, good. And then, do you use the same stomach tags with those ones? Same stomach, same stomach tags. So yep. the, the acoustic tags. Yes. And these are uh, long life tags. So they have a battery um, about ten years. Ten years. Ten years. That's so you can actually. The benefit of those is you can monitor a shark's behaviour from say juvenile stage right through to adulthood, which right. and that gives you informa information on. Yeah, the areas the that, phase yeah, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Growth phase, areas that they use um, when they get to a certain size, they'll move into other areas. Right, so they sort of... Gives you a, a bit yeah. of an overview of their life cycle. Yeah.